first let me introduce myself. Obviously, my name is Brian. Um, I'm an entrepreneur myself. I have a startup, foodtofork.com. And what we do, we are a recipe website. We provide search by ingredients cost hundreds of thousands of recipes. Now, we have used a variant of this model unknowingly in our own startup, and I want to talk about that and how it can work for you, and generally, what is it? What are the benefits of it? And how is it going to help? So first of all, what is a startup? I know we all say, obviously, we all know what a startup is. Starting a business, you're building a product, you're getting it out there, you're trying to get users, you're trying to make a million bucks. Awesome. But the truth is, that's not all a startup is. Startups are everywhere. Startup is a human institution designed to create a new product or service under conditions of extreme certainty. And under those conditions, this model is designed to increase your chances of success. Startups fail because they are managed poorly and ultimately they don't deliver what the user needs. So these startups can exist in huge corporations as new products, ventures, new ways of doing things, nonprofits, governments, or in a garage like how we typically think of a startup. And any startup can benefit from this method. But what is the lean startup? What is that? What is that? It's a method of engineering success. It is a scientific process for increasing your chances of success with your startup. Um, it is, obviously, he, the author of the book says it can be engineered by following the right path process, which means it can be learned, which means it can be taught. He, te he teaches it like it's math. You're going to learn in steps. Um, and it's all based on the build, learn, measure principles. These are the five principles of the lean startup. Entrepreneurs are everywhere. Like I said, startups are everywhere. Startups are not just how you and I think of them. Startups are everywhere. And the people who are doing those startups are entrepreneurs, whether they're in huge corporations, governments, or right here in this room. Entrepreneurship is management. A lot of people like to think we become entrepreneurs to get away from management, to get away from the typical model where you have your boss, you have your manager, they're telling you what to do. But the truth is you're starting a company. You are trying to deliver something a customer wants and you are, you have to manage that correctly. You have to manage resources, time, people in the most effective fashion to deliver what the user wants to make the most out of those resources. Validated learning. So, if you fail at something and somebody puts you on the spot, they say, tell me what is good about this. You will come up with a million things that you learned. You will do it. People were creative. They don't like to, you can just say, I learned this, I learned that, I learned that, next time it's going to be better. Validated learning is all about backing that up with real data. It's taking that to the next level where you can say, I learned this because of this, and this is what's going to be better next time. It's the build, measure, and learn principles, which is you're building a product, it's, you're measuring its effectiveness, and you're learning with real data, validated learning, and innovation accounting, which is a method of um, constructing actionable metrics. That's what that means. You construct uh, numbers, key performance indicators. What does this need to be do uh, in our measure? What are we measuring? What makes sense to measure? Number of users, number of page views. What actually means our success? what is going to get us there to what the customer needs. So, where did this model come from? The Eric Rice, the writer of the book, The Lean Startup, he was the CEO of IMVU, uh, the popular 3D avatar IM network, and he had failed startups with over 40 million in funding. He said he did one startup, there.com. He had five years of R&D, 40 million in funding, they came out and they flopped. Cata uh, catastrophe. Nobody. They lost $40 million. It was gone. So coming from that, and his founders also coming with a few failures of their own, they wanted to say, how can we do this where we can invent a system where we do not need to lose that much money? If we fail, we learn from it. We progress. And we fail fast. So we don't waste five years of our lives. So um, he was wrong at first with IMVU. Their first idea was, hey, let's plug in to AIM, Microsoft IM, Yahoo IM. This is way back in 2004-ish. Let's plug into that and let's build 3D avatars basically on top of that. What they found out was that that wasn't what users wanted. Nobody liked their product. Luckily, they only spent six months developing it because they were working on this model. And they were able to iterate quickly, push out what did the customer really want, experiment with that, and eventually they were pushing out 50 million in revenues. So why should you use this method? So this is something I thought of. Imagine you're walking into a calculus test, you only know algebra. You're going to sit down, you're going to see that integral sign, you're going to fail. 
That's just what's going to happen. And that's what happens when you're starting a startup. You have extreme uncertainty. You do not know what the customer wants. You have assumptions. You have preconceptions. You don't actually know. You have to correct these with feedback and experimentation. Using this in your own startup or in anything you do will increase your chances of success. You'll get closer to what does the user actually want. And eventually, you'll learn how to it's like math. You build it step by step. And part of that is accepting you will fail. And that, that's a tenet of the Lean Startup. It's, failing is not a bad thing, though. It reinvents the meaning of failure. When you fail, it's a good thing. You learn from it. You don't fail once. You fail all the time. And every time you fail, you're one step closer to success. Not, not like the metaphorical end. I'm talking literally. You fail. It's an experiment. And you say... That gives me an idea for something else that might work. It is, you're experimenting, experimenting. Failures are good. It's, a, it's part of the process. So, these are the three tenets, uh, three essential things of a startup. Vision, strategy, and product. Everyone who has a startup essentially has a vision. We want to build this. We want it to be awesome. But really what you're trying to do is build a sustainable business. That is what a startup is. Thriving, world-changing, and sustainable. It can support you, all your employees, and you don't need to continue to get funded. Your strategy is the way you go about achieving that vision. It's your business model. It's the way you're going to market yourself. It's your roadmap. Point of view, partners, competitors. Idea, target market. The product is a result of your strategy. It's iterated. It's experimented on. So what you're actually doing is you're driving a car. You need to treat your startup like a car. Think about when you drive your car. Do you, you know how to get from point A to point B? It's essentially your vision, point B. If I asked you to replicate everything you do with your hands while you're driving the steering wheel on the way from point A to point B, you will not be able to do it. You react. It happens constantly. But if you do that with a rocket, it will blow up. One mistake in the very beginning by some tiny decimal point, some engineer was sleepy, and that rocket's going down. So that's the key. Is you're, not, you're not launching a rocket. Your startup is not a rocket. You're not going to calculate everything. This is this, this, this. It's not that solid. You're driving a car. You need to react. You need to be able to change. You need to be able to turn if you need to. Your engine is the engine of growth. It's how fast you're getting from point A to point B. It is your product. And sometimes that needs to be tuned. It needs to be changed. It needs to be worked on. Like I'm saying, this is all part of the build, measure, and learn framework. It's a process. You go through it continuously, continuously, continuously. This is the way you get closer to the customer needs. This is your experimentation, your testing, and your validated learning. This is your tuning your engine. You're making it go faster. You're making it go in the right direction. Um, you're learning exactly what needs to be tuned from your startup. What, uh, what is good? What's a misconception? What is actually nobody wants it? And that happens. And you know when to pivot. You know when you... The data will back up. What is not going right? What actually? We need to change our whole strategy. It's backed up by data. You pivot. So you start with an idea. You build it. You learn. You measure your actionable metrics, and you learn from it. So let me talk a little bit about food to fork in this. Starting out, we built a recipe search engine. That's what we did. We said, hey, it's going to be really cool if we can search by ingredients, and we can do it in a way that looks really cool. Um, nice pictures. I like to look at food. I don't know about you guys. That's great. Um, we can, essentially the idea was open up your fridge, see what you can make. What have we discovered? We built that product. Nobody's using our search. Why is that happening? Is it not easy, not hard to find? I mean, is it not easy to find? Is it uh, nobody wants that kind of search? What is it? So, we're doing experimentation. We're changing the way it looks. We're changing, okay, what if we emphasize this? We're going to measure the results of those experiments, learn from them, and change our product accordingly so we can deliver what the customer wants. Do they want pictures? Do they want the recipe search? Do they, what exactly do they want? You don't know. It's extreme uncertainty. You have to find out. And this is how you start your minimum viable product. So, the minimum viable product is essentially the first thing you can build that gives you the maximum amount of validated learning possible. So, what does that mean? What is your idea? Recipe search engine. What is the first thing you should build? I wish I would have done a smaller MVP. We could have learned from it earlier on. 
And that's the key. You want to be able to get with the least amount of work, least amount of effort. If you can do it in a week and get good validated learning, that's good. If it takes you six months, it's what it takes. But it's evaluating that. So what was the first thing we built? Um, an entire web page with like 2,000 recipes pulled from one site. It was pretty minimum. And we put it out there, and we got decent results. We're like, OK, people like the, the pictures. That was our minimum viable product. We iterated on that. We have over 100,000 recipes. We have a lot more search functions now. And that's the key here. It's the first experiment. You're testing your assumptions. You're going into this with assumptions. People want this. That's an assumption. You have preconceptions. They want it because of this. You're testing all that. Groupon was actually a different company called The Point initially. They were not successful. What they launched was a WordPress blog where they posted daily coupons to some pizza store. They handmade these coupons, and everyone who signed up said, give me one. They sent them through Apple Mail, up to 500 emails a day. It was all hand work. They didn't develop this huge complex system to test their idea. They got it going. They tested it, and they said, OK, people really want this. Let's take this to the next step. Let's continue iterating. Let's make it better. And now <coughs> Groupon is huge. Everybody knows that. They have problems. <laughs> they grew really fast. Products are experiments. You build a product that's an experiment. You're testing an assumption because that assumption might be wrong. You're testing the hypothesis. My hypothesis, people want recipe search engine that can search by ingredients. They want to be able to open up their fridge, see what they can make. That was my hypothesis. We tested it. We're working on it. Measuring the outcome of the experiment, you learn. Learning is the most important part. It's going from the algebra to calculus. It's taking your startup from the garage to huge campus with a thousand buildings, whatever. The outcome, you learn how to build a sustainable business from these products. Measuring the results of these experiments is key to the iteration process. You can use some methods or A-B testing, which is essentially you show one customer one thing, you show a different customer another thing, and you measure the way they interact with it according to your actual metrics like we talked about. Is it this many people are signing up, this many people are clicking a link. Is it this many people want coupons? What is it? It's a way of measuring changes. It's a new hypothesis. Okay, I think people aren't using our recipe search because this search box isn't big enough. Let's make it bigger for some people and see if they use it more. It's a way of doing an experiment without completing, completely changing your product. Um, it's essentially a scientific method. You form a hypothesis, you experiment to test it, and you analyze the results. Intuit is a huge company. They basically write all the tax software that anybody uses that's actually important. Um, during tax season, two and a half months, they do 70 experiments a week on their website. This is actually from the Lean Startup book. Um, they operate like a startup. This huge corporation operates like a startup. They run experiments, they build, measure, and they learn. And they are in several billion dollars of revenue. They have multiple industry leading products. And it's <clears throat> innovation accountability. This is the performance metrics I mentioned. It's a way of keeping yourself accountable. Actionable metrics. The key is you don't want vanity metrics. You don't want, for example, for a while, Food to Fork, we're looking at page views. Our page views are going up. This is awesome. People are. Okay, but uh, then they're looking at one page and they're leaving. It doesn't matter. You need the, met the metric. People are, for example, uh, an actual metric for us would be people clicking through the recipes, looking at more than one recipe. How many people? What can we change to make it do that? And we measure that. Every experiment we measure, does this person go through and click on more recipes or do they click on less? We don't actually care about page use. It's not the most important thing because if they leave and never come back, then it didn't help us at all. There's not, we're not a step closer to the revenue. The key to this is developing the tools to measure these effectively. If you're having to do this all by hand every single time, obviously you're going to have a long cycle through that loop. Building, measuring, and learning. It's going to take a while. If you build the tools where you can do that quickly, you're going to be able to minimize your time. It's going to be powerful. You're going to have this extremely powerful feedback loop. You're going to iterate quickly. and get closer to the revenue, what the customer wants, faster. So if you go into the 
mindset. Let's just build it and see what happens. Maybe people will use it. You've guaranteed success. You're actually guaranteed success in what you are going for. You will see what happens. You're just doing it. But does that mean you're going to learn from it? No, you're not going to be measuring anything. You're not going to be getting any closer to what the customer actually wants or needs, which is the key to developing a successful, sustainable business. Measuring and learning are critical. Don't go into it, just do it. You are measuring a hypothesis. You're measuring an assumption. Like I said, failure is an opportunity, quite literally. You know one more thing that isn't going to work. It's going to give you new ideas for what will work. The customer doesn't want this. Why is that? You start asking yourself questions. You build on that. The customer doesn't want a huge search box. Why is that? What do they want? Hmm. Maybe we can put some pictures of ingredients right there. They can click on them. That would make it easier. Something we worked with. People didn't like that, but that's, that is the, the process. You learn from your failures. And like I said, the word failure is reinvented. It's not just we are started crash and burn. It's if one experiment didn't work, move on to the next one, the next one, the next one. Eventually you're going to get there. You're building incrementally. You're not trying to become overnight success. You are trying to build a sustainable business. Something that will make millions of dollars. So, like I said, it's easy to come up with a million reasons, that, a million things that you learned. Does it mean you actually learned anything? No. Anything that's going to help you next time? No. You back it up with data. Real data, data you measured according to your actionable metrics. And when the data says you need to, you pivot your strategy, change it, change your product. You get your engine tuned up, you go in there faster. It's the key. And this is all part of the giant feedback loop. You build, you measure, you learn. You do it again, you do it again, you do it again, you do it again. They minimize the time through that loop until you have such a powerful feedback loop that you're doing it every week, every month, whatever's appropriate for your startup. You are experimenting. You're, every time you experiment, every time you work your way through this loop, you are one step closer. Algebra is calculus. Science. It is. Engineering principle to take your startup from idea, concept, to a product that the customer wants. Poly Founders is a startup. We're here to provide a service to all you guys. Talk about what we can give you. And we're working on different ways we can do that. We tried things last year. We're trying different things this year. You can do this in any startup. Minimizing the total time through this loop, you'll be able to get there faster. Tuning your engine. So with enough effort, persistence, and honesty to yourself to admit that you were wrong about something, which is pretty hard, um, you eventually, you'll have what the user needs. You follow this, you will have it. You Working your way through that feedback loop, you will fail fast, you will fail cheaply, you will you don't need to recover from the failure because failure was part of the plan. You're closer to success. And that is the lean startup. You're achieving your vision with a great strategy. You've tuned your engine, you're gonna launch fast, and you're gonna launch cheaply.